lot of people out here. All right, everything happens for a reason. And in, on May 12, 2006, I was arrested for arson after a psychotic episode with mania. And I, and I like sharing this with people for two reasons. One, I think it gets rid of some of the stigma that, that's around with uh, environments and, and people who have this uh, sort of issues going on, but also because it opens up that natural dialogue between people to get that authentic experience. I'm 26 years old. My name is Michael Witham. I was born in Scottsdale, Arizona, in a good family. Had no reason for uh, these types of things to happen to me, no traumatic experiences and such. My parents taught and still teach at a local high school here, and uh, they were given all the resources and everything that I needed to succeed in life. I was passionate about baseball. I uh, pursued my dream and played community college baseball at, at South Mountain Community College. And I was following my path and following my dream until everything went a little awry. And in the uh, November of 2005 is when it all began. And I found myself losing interest in the things that I'd always been uh, extremely involved in. School was slipping out of the picture, baseball was slipping out of the picture, and uh, I found myself confused. The stability of my life was taken away. And what happened was I started to get depressed. And I started to feel hopeless and started to feel all the feelings that come with depression. And I saw a doctor and I became medicated on antipsychotics and antidepressants. And I started the treatment of what I was going through, but I didn't understand what was happening. And I found myself sleeping on the couch, suicidal, obsessing, fantasizing about ending my life, killing myself. And uh, it, <laughs> sorry, it gets difficult to talk about. And um, so what happened was, I came out of this depression and I started to go too far to the right. And I started to become super manic, where I was doing things that were out of the norm. I was becoming delusional and having ideas that I wanted to work for the CIA. So I went to ASU's library and checked out 45 books on code cracking and cryptology. And I started to panic people. And the people around me were trying to reach out and I wasn't reachable. You know, I started to do things that were a danger to myself and a danger to others, so I was hospitalized. I spent 10 days in a mental institution down at Desert Vista where I was temporarily you know, medicated and uh, stabilized. However, the, the stigma of being bipolar, it wasn't being bipolar, I was bipolar. It wasn't a part of me, it was everything that was about me. And I couldn't handle that. I became super sensitive of how people were reacting to me and the behaviors that people were showing me. And some of my closest friends moved away from me and I took it out as anger. So one day, well, excuse me, one of the people who uh, petitioned me to the, uh, the psych institution, my best friend at the time, one of the only people that was actually trying to help me in this confusion and, and in this mess I was creating for myself, uh, I set his car on fire. And in doing that, I got arrested and spent the next 11 months of my life in county jail. The first five months of that was in the psych unit of Lower Buckeye Jail, where I was with some of the, uh, some of the people that we fear, that we're taught to fear in life, and the people who are murderers, and the people who are pedophiles, and the people who do the things that we're always taught not to do. And that experience was quite life-changing. Um, the slide that's about to come up is me in my insanity. That's the day that I got arrested and it's very difficult to look at and see where I was at that point in time. I was, released from the, I was released from jail to the Salvation Army Adult Rehabilitation Center, and that's kind of where my life got back on track, where I was able to move away from that picture and into a new life. I was able to accept who I was and, and what had happened to me and some of the traumatic experiences that I had been through in jail and in the psych institution, and also some of the destruction that I caused in my life. And in my experiences with meeting all these people, me included, is that people aren't bad. People do bad things, and there are circumstances that drive people to behave and express themselves in ways that may not be apparent to everyone, but in, in their own internal consistency, it seems real. And I think it's important for people, my, my example is very extreme, but as people go through these life changes, and you're faced with adversities, whether it's a divorce or whether it's some job change or whatever it is that's very important to you that causes you to have those same expressions is to be empathetic for that. And allow people to change, be supportive. If you need help, go get help. The stigmas of being trapped and confined to that lifestyle robs you of the riches of life. 
So thank you for your time. Thank you for allowing me to express myself. I'm very grateful and have a good evening. <laughs>